it has been about one week since the next gen of video games has launched, and since I've had now a Xbox Series X and a PS5 in my household for about a week, I thought I would do a video on my thoughts, feelings, impressions, things I liked, things I didn't like, etc, etc. What's good internet? My name is Attack Slug, and I'm gonna start with the Xbox Series X. So I will say on both consoles, the speed of how things get done, I am all about. Just the general dashboard speediness, having those SSDs, having the game load times be minimalized in a way that is just greatly pleasing as someone who's dealt with load times over the years in games that, man, that truly feels like a next-gen leap. Not just the 4K, not just the HDR, just the load times feel amazing. But I will say, on the Xbox Series X in particular, uh, the dashboard, it's the same dashboard. If you have an Xbox One, a One X, this is going to all be very familiar. And across the board, that's kind of their whole modus operandi, is that they want everything to be the same across the board. They don't care which Xbox you're on, as long as you're on in Xbox. And so from that viewpoint, from that particular bit of business that, hey, it's the same, it doesn't really feel like a new gen thing outside of the load times, outside of being on the dashboard here and having it separate your games between Xbox X and S and Xbox One and Xbox 360. That's fine. But just having it be the exact same thing is like, well, yeah, it's new and yeah, it's better. But the feel is the same, and that can be good and bad, because we get to the PS5 here in a second, there are things I don't like there and what they've changed. So having it be the exact same, at least I know where everything is, and all of the functionality is the same there, and I can appreciate that on a certain level, but also, it's you just paid how much money and you want new, and it's kind of the same thing. But again, if you didn't have the old stuff, then it's going to be new to you. But the one thing I think is leagues better on the Xbox than it is on the PS5 is the smart delivery where I can put in a disc, it goes, hey man, this is the console you have, we're gonna get the files for you, you're not gonna have to worry about it. We're not gonna install this game twice on you, here's the best version of the best game, the best console, and you're good. You don't have to think about it, they're just gonna get your cloud saves from the internet, and it all just works seamlessly, and it's great. But on the topic of cloud saves, they're not always perfect, especially coming from Xbox 360 over to an Xbox One over to an Xbox Series X. In particular, for me, my Trials Evolution save file, for some reason, did not carry over to this system. I have it installed on the 360 and on the One X and on the Series X. And I booted it up here on the Series X and I had a fresh, like, untouched save file. I don't want that. I booted back up my 360 didn't think to take it off the internet when I did, and it synced that fresh save file to the original console. Now, I still have the complete save file on my Xbox One X, but right now I have no idea how to force the Xbox to put that save onto the cloud. But perhaps just a me problem with how I do things and having these three consoles that all are running the same game in the same save file, so that's kind of, you know, it's not always perfect. And having the options to do it manually can occasionally be helpful when you still have the old consoles that are still hooked up and are still on your internet, etc, etc. But in terms of installing games off of a disc, I will say having now installed Watch Dogs Legion and Yakuza, when the console is in the vertical upright position, that drive, at least for me, is super loud and sounds like it's kind of not functioning properly. It's way louder than it should be. However, putting the console in the horizontal position, it was incredibly quiet and it seemed to function as intended. So if, you're, if you are installing games off of a disc, I would say put your Xbox on the side, don't have it upright, and it'll work as intended. I don't know if all Xboxes are like that, but I know mine was, and it's a thing to watch out for. But speaking of Watch Dogs, I didn't finish that game because on this platform, on the Xbox Series X, there is a save bug where it's not saving your progress as often as it should be, and I didn't want to keep losing hours of progress, and I sent it back to Gamefly. But that's kind of just Ubisoft being Ubisoft. Now, I do want to talk HDR. Even though this video does not have HDR, I want to discuss the HDR thing on the Xbox because as with the previous console and as with their ongoing 
backward compatibility program, they are adding even more value to your older games. In this case, it is called Auto HDR. It is taking those old games and trying to extrapolate the information in the color gamut and trying to simulate HDR in games that never had it in the first place. And in practice, when this works, it works really well. When it doesn't work, it's just kind of washed out and not great. But I've tried a few old games on the 360. I tried Earth Defense Force and Spelunky and Sonic because I know that 2D games were never meant for HDR in the first place and that definitely it looked okay. But it's one of those things where you're going to want to turn it off on games where you know it's not going to work that well. But like most things they've been doing with backwards compatibility, they will introduce a feature and then over the course of the next two or three years, refine, refine, refine until it is just spectacular. I mean, they made Xbox 360 games work on an Xbox One, which is a totally different CPU. So I'm not going to doubt the magic that they can do in their software. And that in general, with both of these consoles, those older games, getting a bump in resolution, getting a bump in frame rate, and on Xbox, getting that auto HDR makes you want to go back and play what are literally better versions of those old games. It's awesome. For example, here is some footage of Earth Defense Force 2017, a very early Xbox 360 game, and from a franchise known for tossing a million bugs and ants and spiders and UFOs at you until the frame rate absolutely craters. Here is an end game stage from that captured on an Xbox 360. Now let's check that same stage playing on the Xbox Series X and notice how once all these ants and spiders and spaceships get close to me notice how the frame rate holds up I'm not gonna say it's 60 but it holds up way better than the Xbox 360 ever would and, and even better than the Xbox One X would do here so it's way more playable with all this chaos going on with all these thousands of bugs and everything else happening, the frame rate holds up in a way that it never could in the original uh, without any serious other issues happening in this stage, which is honestly, technically, kind of super amazing. And uh, that's awesome. Like, in a game series known for the frame rate dying when everything gets crazy, uh, having it be pretty solid here is kind of a super impressive feat. Now, it's going to depend on the game, right? It's going to depend on the programming on how different games handle this stuff uh, better than others, right? So I wouldn't say every game's gonna have a, a, a better frame rate, but the ones that do, man, you're gonna be glad that they do. Now, I haven't spent too much time with things like fast resume, because generally this console, everything boots so fast, games boot so fast that I don't need it, but I do know it's there, because I had shut down for the night, came back the next day, relaunched, Trials HD, and it was in the exact same spot that I left it, so awesome. Now, in terms of storage, you do get a little bit more of storage here than you would on a PS5, and more importantly, if you want to spend another 220 bucks, you can get another one terabyte drive to double the available storage on the console. Personally, I'm a ways away from that. I would prefer to see a two terabyte option, hopefully not for twice the price, but, you know, I'll give it a year and see how things fill up. I'm not in a hurry, my internet's pretty fast, not a big deal. But what could be a big deal to at least some people who might have multiple Xboxes is that unless you set this Xbox as your home Xbox, which is here under personalization in your settings to set this Xbox as your home Xbox, that means when you're offline, you can play your downloaded games, right? Even if you bought the games, like I bought Trials, I bought Spelunky. If if this was not my home Xbox and I tried to play them offline, like say over at Grimm's house, it wouldn't work. It was like, no, you have to be online. And I don't want that always online DRM. However, with the Xbox One X, you don't need to have it be set as your home Xbox to play those games that you already own offline. Granted, I'm a weird use case for that 
and that's kind of a weird little thing, but again, we don't want that 2013 vision of the Xbox being an always online console, because sometimes the internet goes down. If you have multiple Xboxes like I do, set the one that you want to do offline as your home Xbox and you should be okay. So generally my verdict here is that the Xbox Series X is pretty much the same Xbox, but way more power under the hood and does way more for your old games. I'm looking forward to seeing what it does for new games, hopefully in the near future. But that's the Xbox. Let's hop over here now into the PS5. Now when you boot up a PS5, you're like, oh man, it's that new. We're in a new console generation. This looks and feels and performs and behaves differently. Now it's still using kind of the same idea of that cross media bar since the PSP. I get that, right? And it's obviously a bit different here and they've changed things around a little bit. Some things are changed for the better. Some things are changed for the more annoying. The first thing to get on my nerves just from a perspective of ease of use is that it used to be on PS4. You hold the button here, right? And when you hold it, it brings up the power down menu power, rest, etc. right? Restart. Now, you gotta hit it once, then go down, then go over, and then you're in the menu for power. Like, that just let me hold the button and do it quickly. That was a nice shortcut. Why get rid of that shortcut? I don't understand. The next thing is the lack of folders. I know you're thinking, hey, there's not enough space on the drive to install enough games to even think about having to need folders. I understand. But still, it would be nice to have folders. Come on. There are some settings that feel like they take more clicks to get to, like hopping into the friends list and actually getting down into where the friend requests are. If you don't see it in your notifications, like some stuff just does feel a bit differently and you can mess around here with this in the customize and there are things you can add and remove here. So that's kind of cool. Broadcast and you know, network. And so that's a neat option to have here. Now back to the whole thing with the cloud saves. Obviously on PS5, to get to your PS4 saves, you're gonna head into your settings and head into your save data. And there, you can go into your PS4 save data, what's on the console, what's in the cloud, what's on a USB drive, and get to things there manually and not have to hope that, that say Xbox gets things where it needs to go. And that much I do like. For some folks, I'm sure that can be annoying, but if you ever lost a save file, you'd be glad to have a manual sync here, and that would be nice. Now, one of the biggest things I love about PS5 right now is they've been tracking how much time you play video games. Because obviously, companies want to know how long were you playing their games. And finally, for the end user, they are giving us that information. 3DS did that years ago. Everyone should have copied 3DS. Now, it's not without some caveats. Clearly, it's capped at 300. I've played more than that between PS4 and PS5. So if you go back and install those games, it will show up those old games. Like here, I installed 2K15 here, right? And you can see, 207 hours, that's way too much of that game, right? But it, that was not in the list. There were games I played before that game that were in the list, but not that one until I actually went and got the disc and reinstall it. So that's kind of weird. And also, I don't know why this game is top of the list, but I played it once years ago and it won't leave. It does not matter what I play right now, this game is on top of the list and I don't know why. But not only is having a total playtime an awesome feature and saying, hey man, how long ago did I play that game? Oh, 698 days ago, I played Astrobot Rescue Mission. That game is amazing. Go play it. But the actual installing process is more detailed on PS5. I'll show you. Put in a copy of a Neo 2. Great game, right? And it's gonna get some upgrades here for PS5 and a Neo 1 and 2 remaster next year, right? But once I'm down here and it's doing its thing, I can go down into the bottom left here, go down into my downloads and uploads and click through to Neo 2. Now on PS4, it would only show you the little bar until you have what you need to actually start playing the game. That's all you would get, right? And saying, hey, here's your update, here's your download. But once you hit that bar, your only indication the game was finished installing was when the disc stopped spinning. Here, it shows you the entire bar for the entire install. And that is awesome. Because some games, even though it says, hey, you can start playing it, you really can't. 
Some games you have to have the entire game installed to even do anything with, so having this information being able to be accessible is awesome. And while the Xbox drive was super loud when I installed games upright, PS5 seems fine. It seems just as loud as the PS4 was, but which again, was fine. I have not tried laying it down to see if it's gonna be any quieter because kind of what it is currently is okay by me. But not everything is all roses here, right? If you have a PS4 game that has a PS5 upgrade, like say Spider-Man, it's gonna install both. And for a system that has limited space on your hard drive, that can be annoying when you only have this much space left and it wants to install both, but you don't need both. So right now I can sit here and go out of the dot and say, you know what? I want it on PS4. Oh, the, the whole game's here on PS4. So the way it works is that you put in that PS4 disc. It's going to have a box next to where the bar says progress and the, tr and the, the trophies that says get your free PS5 upgrade. And when you do that, it's going to add to your cart and you can download it. But while it's downloading, it's also spinning the disc and installing version on PS4, which for me, when it said, hey, you can play Spider-Man, even though it was still downloading, it was downloading and it was installing and I was playing it and that made the game crash. Not only did the game crash, it shut the whole PS5 down. So again, maybe you wait until it finishes installing. But thankfully, once that's all done, you can go into storage here you can go into the games and apps and say, you know what, I don't need to have the PS4 version of Spider-Man, which actually is more data than the PS5 version of Spider-Man. Like that's too much space here when you have a limited amount of space here and there's currently no way on PS5 to add more storage. At some point we're gonna get that, but it's not there at launch. It's not there at week one like Xbox has. And perhaps you're thinking, why on earth would I ever keep two versions of the same game installed on the same console and I will tell you that right now for PSVR backward compatibility stuff only works in the PS4 version of the game so if you buy Hitman 3 in January buy it on PS4 because that version is going to have the VR whereas Hitman 3 on PS5 no VR support but the reality of having two versions of Hitman 3 installed with all the stages from Hitman 2 and Hitman 1 in two versions on this console, I'm not doing it. Hitman 3 in VR, I'm playing on my PS4 Pro and leaving that file there because that's too much space for me for one game. What are you doing? But moving on to HDR. The way PS5 handles HDR is that when you boot games, you're already in HDR. When you're on the menu here, you are already running the HDR which generally is okay until it's not. A game like Spelunky 2, a 2D game that is not designed for HDR. And what they are doing to my knowledge is they're taking the whole console and just putting it in a generic HDR wrapper. And the problem with HDR is A, I have no way to measure that. B, each TV model and brand operates a little bit differently with how it displays HDR and each game is gonna operate a bit differently that actually supports HDR. So everyone's gonna really experience that a bit differently, but what I do know is the basic HDR wrapper they have on the PS5 for everything, when you launch this game, Spelunky, it looks washed out. I've played way too much of the game to know how it looks, and it looks not right when you're playing it with HDR on. So if you're like me, you're gonna head over here into screen and video and take HDR and turn it off for those games that you don't wanna have it in. But it is an automatic thing for everything on the console. On Xbox, it's on a per game basis. And on Xbox, it's trying to interpolate and give you HDR where it didn't have it before. It's not just a standard generic wrapper. Personally, I don't think HDR on everything when you aren't actually trying to do a thing with it on a per game basis is smart, but I understand why they didn't want you constantly going into games and having your screen black out to enable the HDR. I get it from that ease of use perspective, but from an actual, hey, make the game look like it's supposed to look per per perspective, it's not that great. Now, much like 
the Xbox, you're going to have that speed here in launching games, loading games, switching games, like just generally everything is snappy and smooth with that SSD and I love that. And your PS4 games are, are going to have upgrades. You're going to have hopefully better frame rates, hopefully better resolution. You're not going to have the auto HDR, obviously. And so in my week of poking around, Xbox generally gives more love to those old games than PS5 does. So at that point, how much do you care about old games, really? But in terms of new games that actually utilize this tech to the fullest, at least in this first week, Spider-Man and Demon Souls, those load times are staggeringly fast. Like you hit X, it fades down, it fades up, and you're in the game, and that's awesome. Also, the pack in here, Astro's Playroom. If you didn't play my game of the year, 2018, Astrobot Rescue Mission, uh, that game was amazing. But the, this is kind of the half pseudo follow up here. And man, as a pack in, as a controller showcase, it's awesome. And just as a video game, it's awesome. And I love it. There are certainly plenty of games that want to be movies or TV or whatever weird stuff. But sometimes you get a game that just wants to be a video game and Astro's Playroom excels at just that. And so even though I've had Xbox for two days longer than PS5, I've played more PS5. There are more games that I want, I want to play right now at launch. And I guess in closing, I will say for both consoles, rest mode seems kind of like, unless you want to make sure you have all the updates and all the downloads in the background, rest mode seems kind of inconsequential. Because last time around, you wanted to have that because they took so long to boot from cold boot. This time, cold boot is basically meaningless. Like, it boots so fast, it don't matter. These consoles boot faster than it takes me to find the remote for the TV and turn it on. But yes, the PS5 certainly gives you more of that new console feel, even though some of the issues can be a bit annoying to work around currently. But again, it's week one. They're going to improve these firmwares. They launch these machines during a pandemic. It happens. And I know some folks are, are going to ask the eternal question. Which one's better? Which should I buy? Versus, versus, versus. And my answer is always the same. Which console has the games you want to play? That's always the answer. Like hardware, whatever. Which games do you want to play? That is the console that you should buy. If there are games on both, then find a way to buy both. That's all I can tell you. Because for me, I hate exclusives. I want to play everything regardless. So I'm going to buy everything regardless. But that's just me. I'm weird. And I am also a tax slug. Thanks for watching more videos right here, both on PS5 and Xbox Series X. And hopefully next year, a new Switch. Fingers crossed for Switch Pro. We'll see. But until then, until next time, I'll be here making videos. I'll see you then. And I'm out.